Welcome to our third video in our problem framing series. Today we're going to be looking at stakeholder mapping. Check out our previous videos on problem framing if this is your first time here. Today we're going to jump right in into looking at the problem from different perspectives, looking outside of the frame so that we can understand the context of the problem, the environment in which it sits. Now, there are many ways of looking at a problem outside of the frame, but today in particular, we're going to focus on stakeholders, stakeholder mapping in particular. And what we're doing is that we're asking three key questions. Who's involved in the problem in some way, shape or form? How close are they to the problem? And how much influence do they have? So those are our three questions. So I want to take you through an example of this to show you what I mean. Asking the questions are all good and dandy, but what we have to do is to move that information that we get from the stakeholders or in analyzing the situation, that information that we get, we need to now make it visual and to create a stakeholder map. There are many types of stakeholder maps. You can go into minute detail with a stakeholder map, but for this example, I'm going to be keeping it super simple and we're going to stick to those three questions and map a bunch of stakeholders for a particular problem. So let's say that we have one particular department or one small team that we're focused on to really understand how the problem with the intranet just not working for the company or for the team, how it affects that team in particular. So the problem is the staff intranet just doesn't work for us. And we're going to be looking at the stakeholders within this team to understand the problem a little bit deeper. Now, let's say in this team, we have got five people in it. We have got Farah, Ali, James, Meg and Ava. Here we have a stakeholder map, a very simple example. As you can see, in the center of the map sits the problem and surrounding the problem are these pink circles. Each circle represents a stakeholder and these circles are of different sizes. Now, this is a very simple, quick visual of the stakeholders involved in the problem and how they interact. So let's break this down to understand what it means. Now we see here that the problem sits in the center of the map and we have mapped all of our stakeholders. We've identified them and they are on the map. So this answers point number one, which is who are the stakeholders? Identify them. Tick in the box right there. The second question was how close are they to the problem? And we show this by the distance between the problem and the stakeholder's pink circle. The further away the stakeholder's pink circle is from the problem is a direct reflection of how far that stakeholder is in reality from the problem at hand. So the dots that are close to it indicate that that stakeholder is pretty close to the problem and those pink dots that are far away indicates that that stakeholder is far away from the problem. We don't use a certain measurement, we just do it in relative terms. So we know that this stakeholder is further away from the problem than anyone else, so we put them at the edge of the map versus, versus a stakeholder who is the closest to the problem, we put them the closest to the center point, which is where the problem sits. So as you can see here, we have our five stakeholders on the map and we have a snapshot view of who they are, their proximity to the problem, and then the third point that we have not yet discussed yet is their level of influence. This is shown by how large their pink circle is. So the larger the pink circle, the more influence that stakeholder has. So on this map, we have all three of those points covered. So why is this important in problem framing? Doing stakeholder mapping in this simplistic way allows us to prioritize our analysis. It helps us to identify where the focus should be, especially when we don't have that much time or we cannot cover absolutely every single base. 
we now know what we need to focus on first as a point of priority. It also helps us to not leave stakeholders behind. We are forced to think about the problem from everyone per everyone's perspective who, who the problem might impact. And so we don't leave people behind and we're able to at least consider their perspective or to identify that their perspective exists. It enables us to map the journeys of the stakeholders so that we can identify the specific points of friction where that stakeholder isn't happy and also those points of delight where we're going above and beyond what our stakeholder expects in the experience. When doing further research and as part of our design thinking process at the empathy stage when we're trying to understand how our stakeholders are feeling what they're saying, what they're doing, and what they're thinking. This allows us to conduct research at a deeper level and to not leave anyone out when we're doing that deeper research. And as we know, this type of thinking allows us to get out of our own heads and to really put ourselves in the shoes of the people who are experiencing the problem. This is especially true for problems where we are involved in creating a solution. In this case, we're talking about the intranet for the company and how our department interacts with it. If we are part of the problem and part of the solution, or thinking can be clouded and we only think of our personal experiences, forgetting about our colleagues and the other people who might interact with the intranet as well. So doing this exercise in understanding who the stakeholders are and mapping them is really useful. Stakeholder maps can be very simple like this one here, or it can be very complex and have way more data points. It's up to you how deep you want to go but we just wanted to show you here how quickly you can create one that is very useful to people as a quick visual and has all of the benefits that we just highlighted. If you're liking this content, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you for watching this video or third in the series of problem framing and we will see you next week for the next one.